Hi, my name is Miss Melissa and I am a teaching artist in the PACE program with the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today we are going to be learning about how volcanoes erupt by creating a three-dimensional volcano made out of paper. So let's go ahead and get our supplies so we can get started. You are going to need a pair of scissors, a bottle of glue, and a napkin. And if you have a paintbrush, go ahead and get it. You don't have to have it, but if you do have one, that's great. You are also going to need tape or a stapler. Now, I'm probably going to use both. If you don't have tape or a stapler, you can use glue, but this is going to be easier. You're also going to need a sheet of cardboard. You can use the back of a cereal box, the back of a notebook, whatever you have lying around the house. Now, we're going to make a tree and a volcano today. So, I would like you to get an assortment of colored papers. Keep in mind, if you don't have um, construction paper, you can always pause the video and get some white paper and color the sheets that you want to um, use today. So, you could always do that. But I'm going to show you the colored construction paper that I would like you to get. So you're gonna need brown and green for the tree. You're going to need orange for the lava. Now, I'm gonna choose brown for my volcano. Maybe you wanna choose black. You can, whatever you would like. I'm gonna choose gray for the smoke. Now, if you want to, you can choose black for smoke. You could also choose white for smoke because we don't really see it that well, and you could even color it gray with a pencil. So get your paper that you want for your smoke, and I would also like you to choose a paper that you want for the ground. You could have green for grass, brown for dirt. Um, I'm choosing yellow for sand because we see mountains in many different places. And you're gonna need one of each of these colors today. So, Go ahead and pause the video and get the supplies that you need and I'll be here when you get back. First thing we wanna do is glue the paper that we chose for our ground onto the cardboard. So I'm gonna move all this out the way and you're gonna need your bottle of glue, your cardboard, your paper, and if you have a brush and napkin, get that. All right, so first thing you wanna do is open up your bottled glue. And I want you to draw a rectangle with the bottled glue. You're gonna make the orange cap touch the cardboard and you're literally drawing on the cardboard. And we're gonna to go to the edge as close as we can and I'm gonna make rectangles spaced apart on the inside. And then I'm gonna spread all of this, kind of like a, a maze, you see that? I'm gonna spread all of this around with the paintbrush. Now, if you don't have a paintbrush, you could use your finger, and you could also, once you close the uh, bottle of glue, you could use the orange cap to spread it. Now, you, um, you may want to put some newspaper or just some recycled paper under your cardboard so you don't get anything on the surface. Now, I'm spreading this out so it sticks really good to our paper that we chose for the ground. And you could always wash your brush later. Okay, so now once you spread your glue, I'm going to take the paper and I want to line up the corners all along the edges too. I'm just gonna look at one corner here and then the edges up here. You can kind of press like this. And I have a little bit of glue on my hands and you could use your napkin. Now, if 
you turn it over, look at that. You see, the paper was bigger than the cardboard. So I'm just pressing really good on the bottom and now I'm gonna cut the extra paper off. Now when you're cutting, keep in mind that you always wanna keep your fingers away from the scissors and you always wanna open the scissors wide and put the paper in the back of the scissors mouth. See? And you just open and close and you just keep going. And it's okay if the, if the paper sticks out a little bit past the cardboard, that's fine. So I chose yellow for my sand. Now, since we're gonna be making a tree and a volcano out of paper, we're going to have to fold and cut our paper first because we're not gonna need all of this. So what I want you to do is get your paper that you're gonna need for your volcano, whether it's brown or black. Put this one aside. We're gonna need the whole thing. So put that aside. Now for your lava, your smoke and your green and brown for the trees, we're going to stack these four papers up just like that. And I want you to fold it in half like a book. Make sure the um, sides and the corners touch. And when you get all of that touching, you can open it up and we are going to cut all along the crease. Now, you can cut one at a time or you can cut all of them. I'm gonna go ahead and cut one at a time to show you. Because sometimes when you cut papers in half, it, um, it kind of moves around and it becomes uneven. If you're good at cutting, you can put two of them together. So this is gonna be for my smoke. I'm gonna need one of them. I'm not gonna need the other. The orange was for my lava. I'm gonna need one. I don't need the other, okay? Let's go ahead and cut the green for our trees. Now, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna need one for my tree. I don't need the other. I'm just putting them aside, and this is gonna be for my tree trunk. I need one for the tree trunk, and I don't need the other. We're gonna go ahead and make a tree first. So I wanted you to look at this picture. Now, these are examples of 3D shapes, that, and they mimic 3D forms, which means it represents and looks like a three-dimensional form. Now, if you had to choose one of these for the trunk of a tree, which one do you think you would choose? If you were thinking this object right here, this is called a cylinder. This would be the perfect 3D shape for a trunk. So we are gonna start making our tree in this shape. Now, I already put my ground here, okay? So you need your green and your brown for your trunk. You're also gonna need all your other supplies. So we're gonna stack up both the green and the brown sheet, and you're going to fold it in half like a book. Make a crease after the sides and the corners touch, okay? And we're gonna cut on the uh, crease. Now I can keep both of these papers together to cut because we're going a very short distance so that it shouldn't move too much. Just take your time. Okay, very good. Now I'm gonna put these two aside and now we have these two. Okay, so for the trunk, what you wanna do is now here is the tall way here is the long way put it the long way and we are going to roll very 
loosely roll. Look at that. I just made a what? I just made a cylinder. Now this is where you can use tape or um, a stapler. You could always use glue as well, but you're going to have to hold it down for a while for it to stick. Okay, so if you don't have tape or a stapler, you're gonna have to use glue and you may have to pause the video. I'm gonna show you how to do both. You can put a staple or you can put the tape. See that? You stick it. It's clear, so it's kind of hard to see. I stuck it on halfway on the outside. I'm gonna fold it over and put the other half on the inside, okay? All right, so now we have our tree. Now the thing is we're gonna have to get it to stick to our paper. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna press it and squish it. And just make sure when you cut, you want to um, cut around your, if you had a staple, cut around that. So I'm just gonna make a little slit right in the middle. You know, just a little slit, okay? Now, let's open this up, okay? And you see where I made the slit? Now, let's fold that in half. The slit is gonna be on, the, on both sides, and let's make another slit in the middle. And that just means like a small cut. Okay, now look at that. Now, you should have one, two, three, four areas that you could fold out because we just made some little openings in the paper. And this is what we're gonna glue down. Do you see that? This is what we're gonna glue down for our tree trunk. And I like the brown sticking out because that could be the roots of the tree. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a dot of glue under all four brown, it looks like a square. And I'm gonna put it in the corner of my paper. You can choose whatever corner because I wanna leave some room for my volcano. So let's just hold this down and maybe count to 10 and press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now, if you wanted to make the roots fancy, you could have, you know, cut them smaller, maybe shaped them, but this is good. It's just, um, I'm keeping it simple. Now let's go ahead and make our leaves for our tree. Great job on your cylinder, huh? So the, the trick for sculpting is folding paper. Whenever you want to sculpt with paper, it's folding it and you have to cut these slits in order to stick it. Now watch what we're gonna do to our green paper. I want you to take one of your green papers and I want you to fold that in half as well. Make a crease. Fold it in half again, make a crease. It does not have to be perfect. And we're kind of uh, making it into these little hot dog bun shapes. Looks like a rectangle, see? If you open it, you're gonna have how many rectangles? One, two, three, and four. So let's cut on the crease. There were three creases that left us with four rectangle shapes. Okay, so you should have four rectangles. I'm gonna show you how to make the leaves. All right, you ready? So if you have a stapler, what you wanna do is fold the paper together and at the end of it, whoops, sorry about that. At the end where the uh, sides touch, staple it, okay? Let's see if you could see it. Just like this and 
this is what I just made. Okay, so I'm gonna do a bunch of these. Now, if you don't have a stapler, you can do the same thing with tape. You'll probably have to tear your tape first and you put the sides together, put half the tape on one side and half of the tape goes on the other. See? So go ahead and fold and staple or tape your green pieces of construction paper. We're just gonna put all these together on the top of the trunk and it's gonna make some, um, it's gonna look like leaves. If I'm going too fast, remember you can always pause. Now you notice I kind of fluffed them up a little bit. This is kind of fun to sculpt with paper. All right, now, what I'm gonna do is take the side where I put the staple or the tape, and I'm gonna just maybe stick a corner inside of my tree trunk and see if I could staple that. If you could staple it, great. If not, you may have to tape it. You see that? And we just wanna make like a fluffy tree. Well, I'm just gonna use some tape, okay? I'm gonna take the tape gonna stick it on like that and I'm gonna tape it on the inside just like that yeah the stapler I think is gonna be kind of tricky for this now if you don't have tape and you only had a stapler you could always put a dot of glue and you could hold it down and just shape it you can shape your tree however you want we know the leaves are situated on top of a tree See that? I can hold it on the side so you can see it. However you want to design your tree. There's no really special way I'm doing this. I just know that I have to stick it on, on top. And you could even have it kind of hang over a little bit. So just have fun with it. Just make sure however, whatever you do, you attach the, um, the flat piece to the top of the tree. You could fit some on the inside like I just did, and you could fit some on the outside. And it's a lot easier with tape. Glue will work as well. You'll just have to hold it down because the glue has to dry. So far, so good. I'm gonna go ahead and get one of my other rectangles. I think I'm gonna want six pieces. I want a very fluffy looking tree. I want lots of green leaves. I need something you see on the back side here. So now you could even roll your tape, stick it on the back, however you need to do it, whatever works for you. Staple it, tape it, glue it, just make sure you fill up the top. Now we can make our volcano. If you notice, I have a, one picture of two volcanoes. Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cover the bottom. From the top of the volcano, I put a piece of paper and I'm covering the bottom. Now what do we see on both pictures? The blue represents the what? The sky, very good. This would be the lava shooting out of the volcano. Very good. What do you think this gray represents in both and the brown circles? If you were thinking the gray represents the smoke that comes out from the volcano, and if you were thinking that these are rocks that explode that come off of the volcano, you are correct. It looks pretty much the same, right? Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move my paper at the top of the volcano and cover. Now look at what's on the bottom. They're very similar, but yet different. Let's start on this side. What do you notice here? You could see the brown on the outside of the volcano made of, it's like a mountain, right? Made of rocks. And what do you see covering it? 
the lava running down the sides, right? So this represents the inside or the outside of a volcano? The outside, very good. And in this picture, the ground is brown and this would be like showing underneath. Now let's look at this picture. What do you notice here? Right away, I don't know about you, but my eye goes down here, underground. Under the ground, there is something called a magma chamber. This is where the lava exists. It lies at the bottom. And then once it starts to get really hot and it starts to erupt, lots of pressure forms and the lava will start to go up through this pipe. And then there's actually a little vent in this crater on top and the pressure just gets so strong that it literally explodes, right? It pops off the top. Kind of like if you had soda in a bottle and you shook it up and you opened it and it would come out. That's sort of what the lava does. And if you notice on the inside of this mountain, it's a little darker. This just shows you the area that is really affected by the lava and its pressure and its gases that rise up to the top. Here you could see the rocks on the outside. So would this represent the inside or the outside of a volcano? If you were thinking the inside, you are correct. And then you could see what happens at the top, right? All of the lava and the rocks from the mountains and the smoke from the gases rise up. And then as I showed you before, this is what you will see on the outside after an eruption. So I hope you enjoyed that little picture. And speaking of pictures, let's look at this one here. If you had to choose one 3D shape that is similar to a volcano, what would you choose? Well, it kind of has a, um, a triangular shape, right? Which two 3D shapes have a triangular shape? The pyramid and the cone. Which one looks more rounded out? The cone, very good. I am going to show you how to roll your paper to make a cone. All right, so let's get started. You'll need all your supplies and you're going to need your orange and paper for your lava and your gray paper for your smoke or whatever color paper you have. This is the paper for my smoke and the volcano. The big sheet of paper, right? So we're gonna actually make the volcano. What I want you to do is tear a piece of tape. We're gonna need to uh, use this right away. So let's kind of put that tape aside and we're gonna make the volcano first, the actual cone. Now, put your paper going the long way. I want you to put your hand on one end, on one corner, and we're gonna fold it in, and you're gonna have your other hand on the top corner. So I'm gonna pull down as this, this one folds in. So watch, you see I'm, I'm folding in inwards, now, and I'm focusing on getting a skinny top and the bottom's gonna be real loose. So watch, you just have to kind of play with it. So I'm rolling this one here and I'm pulling this back at the same time. See that? Pull. This is going up, this is pulling down and back. And I'm in a rolling direction. Gently pull to get a cone shape. Okay, that feels good. I'm gonna tape the top of this. You could even staple, but it may be kind of hard to staple. You see how it's very thin? That's the trickiest part is to get that point. You know, you roll in, pull out. Now, once you tape the top, then you could staple or even tape the bottom. Okay, whatever works. There we have it. 
I just made a cone shape. And if you need to, you can always press pause until you get it. See that? Now, what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna, where I fold it, I'm gonna put this facing me. I want you to press it flat. Let's press it flat and let's tape all of the opening. Now, again, if you don't have tape, you could always put some dots of glue and press it and hold it down till it dries. So I am going to tear right above where I put the stapler. And maybe, you know, you taped it and you didn't staple it the first time and that's fine. Whatever works for you, whatever's easier for you, whatever you have at the house that you could use or wherever you're at, whatever you have handy is what you use. Okay, so now I taped up the whole thing, okay? And now I wanna cut a straight line. I don't wanna cut too much off, so I'm gonna fold the paper like that. So that way, that'll help me. If I can maybe fold it and make a crease, because I want there to be a straight line and I'm gonna cut along the crease. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna get the excess off. Okay, now what I want you to do is, remember how we did it uh, on the tree trunk? You're gonna make a slit in the middle, like that. Now open it up, put the slit on the side and press, just like for our tree trunk. You see, here we made the slit and here. Now look how uneven it is, you see? So I'm gonna fold my paper again. Whenever we turn it, we can kind of see how it's uneven. Now let's go ahead and cut another piece off. If yours is not, straight and it probably won't be because it was hard to tell until we you know turned it on its side we're gonna cut that off now it looks even all right now let's make a slit in the middle okay see that i'm just gonna kind of when you're when you're sculpting with paper you can just kind of shape it look at that very good now let's go ahead and fold our four. We should have about four rectangles. One, two, it kind of looks like a party hat, huh? Three and four. Now the excess paper that we cut, we want to keep. We're going to do something with it. You're going to take your glue and you're going to draw, open your uh, glue, you're going to draw a straight line on the bottom of all four rectangles. And we're gonna stick this right in the middle, okay? Now you may have some paper that folded on top that you'll have to push down as well. All right, so just go ahead and, and as you're gluing it, you can kind of shape it now there's some lines in it because we had to, um, you know, we had to fold it, but that's okay. It looks like the shape of a cone. So let's hold it down and let's count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And very good. Now with your scrap paper, what you can do is tear some pieces or even cut them and you can kind of fill in the gaps. Because when you have a, a volcano, it's made of rock and it's a mountain and it, it forms above the land and it also touches the land. So we can just put more pieces of paper. You see, I just tore a piece of paper and I wanna fill in the gaps. So go ahead and do that. Use your scratch 
sheet of paper and you can tear it and then put one dot of glue and fill in the gap. See? Now, what do we have left to make? Very good. The lava and the smoke. That's going to be the fun part. Okay, so now we're going to make the lava and the smoke. For the lava and the smoke is I already went ahead and I tore pieces of paper and you can do the same thing. I have some long pieces and some sharp pieces. So, so let me show you how to make the lava and the smoke. All you're gonna do is tear pieces of paper. We don't have to cut and you can kind of wrinkle it and crinkle it and you can put tape and design the lava along the sides, sides of the mountain as you would like. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And I already went ahead and tore some pieces ahead of time just to show you. So no cutting is needed for the lava and the smoke. All you have to do is tear and you can connect pieces together. You could even have it running along the side like this, see? Pretty neat, huh? Remember how you can roll your tape? You could roll it if you would like, or you could just tape it on its side. So I have lava running down on one side, and then I could put lava running down on the other side as well. And you could even put smoke coming out of the top. So I want you to have fun and create as much lava as you would like by tearing and taping your paper. I hope you had fun making your volcano today. Great job. Thank you for joining me today. We will be posting a new lesson every day at 10 a.m. on the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel for kindergarten, first, and second grades each tying into the academic curriculum. You can also get these lessons on AOC as part of the Learn United program accessible on Cox Channel 16 or LUS Channel 4. Kindergarten lessons air at 8 a.m. and first and second grade lessons air at 9 a.m. Some lessons will be in visual arts and some lessons will be in creative movement. So be sure to come back and make art with us tomorrow. If you are interested in supporting programs like this, you can visit the Acadiana Center for the Arts, the nonprofit organization who manages this PACE program. Spread the word, share our videos, and keep making art. If you want more, you can book me for a private online lesson, and my email is in the description box below. Thank you so much, and have a great day.